how big your cabin is. Oh, it's mad. <laughs> Hi sailors, welcome back to Cruising As Crew. Today I am here with Robert, who is a hotel director on board cruise ships, and he's gonna be yep. telling us all about his job, answering all our questions. So, hello Robert. Hey, how are you? What is your job title on board? Hotel director. Ah, short and sweet. Can you please go into detail about that job? So, what are you responsible for? Basically, all our aspects of the hotel operation for guests and crew for all of the living conditions. And of course, there's a very large security and safety component. My other real job is evacuation control officer. In other words, I'm responsible to report to the captain that everybody's accounted for before we abandon ship or whatever happens. So it's a little different from a land operation from that standpoint. But I mean, obviously, as you know, every aspect of the hotel operation falls under us at some point. So yeah. you're yeah. responsible for everyone in the hotel. Pretty much, sure. yeah, for the whole time you're on board, yes. <laughs> Can you please go through the progression? So how did you become okay. a hotel director? What was your first job on board a cruise ship? Well, I got banged on the head. No, <laughs> uh, you know, I actually started when I was really young, I mean, way back in the black and white period of life. I actually worked as a part-time job on a ship out of Vancouver going to Alaska. Okay. And I worked as a dishwasher and a uh, pot washer. Wow. You know, I was by the base. So it wasn't really my intention to do that for a career. At one point, Carnival called me and I went down and uh, there were some good parts about it, but I thought it wasn't really for me. Yeah. And I went home and then Royal Caribbean called me. And this is in between jobs. I was working back in Canada in hotels, you know. Canadian Pacific, which now, of course, is Fairmont. You know, they called me down and they said, you know, I, I said I didn't really want to go. I said, well, if you don't like it, you will send you home. I thought, okay. And I stepped on board and I've been there 32 years now. So wow. but I started as a kitchen steward. You know, I didn't start in any high position. So. Okay. And then That's where did you go after kitchen steward? What was the next step up? Well, I started kitchen steward, which is a utility, head utility position. Then I became food, assistant food and beverage manager in food and beverage. And then food and beverage manager, at the time I was one of the youngest ever. So really I kind of leapfrogged over a two or three year period. Because in those days, I hate to say this, it was like five ships. So for me to be a food and beverage manager on one of the five ships with all of these experts, it was quite a coup in the day. So the same thing happened when, in I think it was 93, uh, there was a posting for the hotel director position. 93. And uh, I said, well, I might as well try and <laughs> got the job. Been so, there ever since. So. I'm the longest serving hotel director, at least in Royal Caribbean, for sure. Really? And, uh, wow. Yeah. yeah, every time there's a parade, they put my teeth in and put me on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that was great, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I spent my time, yeah, like I said, dishwashing, pot washing, whatever t terrible job there was. Yeah. That's how I started. It actually that probably helped me in the long run, too. So. Wow. So you've done it all then? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you want to do this job on a ship rather than on land? Or was that just how it kind of came about? I think yes, because I don't think the land operation was something I was really too interested in. Because there's things that we're responsible for on ships that they're not. But there's things that they're responsible that we're not. Like, I don't need to worry about promoting rooms. I need to do all that kind of stuff. Or, you know, catering uh, services off the site and that. You know, everything that we have is inclusive. What changes for us, of course, is that for the four months you're on, you're on. Yeah. And during that time, anything that happened, of course, I've had emergencies happen at three o'clock in the morning, running to my station, not knowing what was going on, like every crew member does. The thing that I didn't like about land was even though you were home, you were on call seven days a week, too. So, but it turned out that it was great. We had four months on, two months off. It was, uh, it was good. And then the yeah. two months you're at home, you are completely yeah. free. Unplugged, yeah, yeah. I've got the Xbox and Netflix. Hey, listen, <laughs> like everybody else does these days, right? <laughs> yeah. You said Royal Caribbean got in contact with you. So would you say you chose Royal Caribbean or once again, it's just how things worked out? To be honest, when I had left Carnival, I had left the cruise industry, I was finished. And when Royal called me, I said, well, you know, I've done this already. I said, I'm not really interested. And they said, well, we're not Carnival. And I said, well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said, come down for a week. If you like it, you can stay. And if you don't, we'll fly you back. So that was the, the premise for my going. It was also a very rainy, cold day in Vancouver. And I wasn't loving life. It was like January. Yeah. And the idea of going down to the Caribbean for a week didn't sound like a bad idea. Yeah. So there you go. So I didn't really choose it. They did come looking for me. The funny thing was I had applied with them five years before and they just never responded. So I figured they didn't want me. So out of the blue, it came back. So yeah. It really did all fall into place then. Just... Yes and no. I mean, I could have been Prime Minister of Canada too. Right. You never know, right? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have been assassinated by now. Yeah. 
if mm. someone is stepping up as hotel director, would they yeah. shadow another hotel director for a period of time? Yeah, I had that. But also Royal builds in a handover system as well. Because even if you've done it for years, if you're going on a new ship, you need to know what the layout is. Because every ship's got its own challenges, like any operation anywhere. So there is a handover period, and, and they're awful. Nobody likes doing them. I don't want Because <laughs> you either want to be in charge. And if you are in charge, you don't want to be telling the other guy what you're doing either. So, <laughs> But yeah, but there, it is necessary. I mean, because, yeah, again, obviously the safety aspects of the operation are critical. Yeah. And then, of course, what are the issues that are, you know, because... Every ship has a time cycle. At this point, it might be carpeting that needs to be done, or it might be air conditioning might be done, or the galleys need, you know. So you have to be updated on what the issues are, what you're fighting for to get money every year, and that kind of stuff as your year starts. So, yeah, so there's always a handover, and it is it is good. Mind you, we've had some dinners that were a lot of fun, too, so it's not all bad. The chops here and there, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it has to be done. It's a hard life, you know. Well, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. How did you find your first contract as hotel director? It was terrorizing. <laughs> The thing was, it, especially then, uh, you know, we were still uh, we, we were still number two fiddle to Carnival and some of the bigger cruise lines. We weren't the most sophisticated operation. Our our main office in Miami, I think, was a trailer. If I don't like, it. we'd go out for a week and come in. There was no communication, so you were gone. There was no computers, no emails. It was heaven, really. No, but then you'd come in, you'd have a stack of paperwork, and so I would find that there'd be occasions where I'd be looking at papers and not really knowing what what was the, what it was about. A lot of the hotel directors came from purser's positions. They understood the, the, the financials, and I had to understand housekeeping. I had to understand the cruise programs. Cruise programs were a lot simpler than those, but, but these, these were things you need to know because a lot of my colleagues that were F&B, you know, they had this attitude that if you know F&B, you don't need to know anything else, but it's not true. You, you need to learn, you know. You need to learn about housekeeping isn't simply keeping your room clean. There's a lot of operational sides to, uh, you know, pest control, uh, controlling viruses, and all yeah. other things that happen. So... My challenge was just to learn what I didn't know, and I continue with that today because you never do truly know everything. So, so Robert, can you please go mm. through a normal embarkation day as a hotel director? Okay, normal embarkation day. Let's <laughs> use air quotes because something doesn't yeah. normal. Uh, normally, a day for me coming into port on a tournament day, particularly if it's an American port, is we get up around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, meet in the main dining room with all, all the ship's team that's involved with pre-arrival public health inspection because you know one of the things about cruise ships is we get two unannounced inspections a year and, and a lot rides on the score that you get for those things and of course it's critical that your crew know what they're doing anyways to keep people safe food handling food storage all that stuff so i'll start my days crawling around galleys like five o'clock in the morning rather cranky i can that and just making sure that we are in good condition for that and then in that then the uh, we get into port, and of course the luggage uh, starts going off the ship. So you go and take a look at that, and then of course we start getting the early uh, disembarkation going and all that. So there's a lot of early process that going, and then there's the gap between when we get everybody off, say maybe nine thirty, ten o'clock in the morning, and then we got about an hour, hour and a half to reset the ship, get it clean, make sure the cabins are ready, make sure the food's ready, make sure the public areas are ready, and then embark everybody, and then go through the process of getting everybody on board taking care of the first drill because the drill is critical for everybody yeah. else is going on. And, and then that night, um, you, you get together after drill with your division heads and say, okay, what, what are the immediate stuff we have coming up? And you have to also understand that probably 25% of our crew had turned over that day. So we had to get the, the say goodbye to the ones going on vacation, but then also get the new ones into line. If they're new, brand new crew members, it's a whole different ball game. But yeah. uh, so that the operation runs seamlessly, no matter what. 25% turnover is a lot for any operation, but to do it every week, it's, it's a lot. And then what time yeah. do you go to bed on embarkation day? Usually, you know, if, if, if on that day, we don't get the nap in the afternoon, if it's oh. critical in the operation. So <laughs> so usually I'm probably around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you know, and as I get older, it's a little earlier, maybe. But, it's, <laughs> but you know, it's it really depends, because you want to see the first show, you want to get out, because... You know, in our business, we pride ourselves on our uh, loyalty program, yeah. program. So you want to see everybody that's come on board. you got VIPs. So you have about 10 o'clock at night. So it's a long day from 4 till 10 o'clock at night, pretty much straight through. All right. And then what about a sea day? Sea day is a little better. Usually sea day comes the day after. So you sleep in till 7 or 8 o'clock. <laughs> uh, generally on the sea days, it tends to be meetings. I don't know why, but we cram meetings at that time because everybody wants to get off the floor, right? Yeah. So you'll have the meeting in the morning. I usually will start with the executive committee meeting, which is the captain, staff captain, chief engineer, HR manager, myself, and sometimes the doctor. And then there's a division head meeting, and it, and it kind of goes. Now, for me, I try to keep my meetings under 20 minutes because you lose everybody after five. Yeah. I, I Even though I find that up now. You, you just can't sit there and yammer on for an hour and a half and expect anything good to come out of it. So 
So we, we have a meeting in the morning, then we walk around the ship again to see how things going. to sea day, make sure we get enough towels in the pool deck, uh, you know, water stations. Uh, and that people are happy, generally, just kind of gauge the mood of the, of the guests and the mood of the crew. Right? I can walk on a cruise ship and know within 20 minutes whether it's a happy ship or not, or if it's functional or not, you know, it's like any operation anywhere. So there's a, there's a captain's cocktail party, you know, so those one event type things happen usually in that first day. On the other days, there's other events like the welcome back party, lunches. So there's, there's functions on both sides. There's the behind the scenes and there's the public upfront stuff that you do. You have to make appearances at all of those events. Yes, it's because of the head of the department, uh, I'm pretty much involved in everything, so yeah. And what about a port day? As soon as that gangway's down, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, gangway, you know, again, ports, ports also are similar in the fact that you could get a regulatory agency come on to see how your operation's doing. They may tell you they're coming, they may not. Uh, but then generally, it's to make sure that we safely debark the vessel. Usually in those ports, it's our opportunity to do some safety training, so we might do that in the morning. So generally... You get up around 7 o'clock because you want to be up before arrival. Most arrivals are 8 a.m., so you get in there. Then by 11 o'clock, the ship is pretty much clear, and you can kind of do a few things like a safe drills and that. Then you're usually, at that point, you can either go off for a couple hours, or you can just get some rest time if you need to. Yeah. Uh, people start coming back late afternoon, and then things start rolling, and then we sail usually by 5 or 6. And the ship's full on again, a full night of activity. So you'll start around 7 in the morning, and you can go up to 11 o'clock at night, midnight, uh, you know, because you want to vary. If you get predictable on your time frame, the crew know when they can be out when they don't have to be. <laughs> so you got to be smart. Very right? true. Nah, so, you know, and, you know, if you take your foot off the gas, everybody else does too. So yeah. you, you kind of kind of, so I usually finish by 11, 3, 11, or 12. Around there. So, okay, yeah. and then so are you just going from department to department, making sure everything's okay and working? Smoothly? Yes, yeah, and we will do um, inspections just to kind of keep everybody. Because uh, the thing is, you don't see everything every day. All of us are like that, and it's good just to have an extra set of eyes to look at an operation sometimes. When is your job at its most stressful? You know, when you go away and you're and you're with your team and we're all at sea, life doesn't end. And I think that the thing that I find is that when crew members get bad news from home somebody's passed away or yeah. you know that's the hard part uh, because you know everybody's different their beliefs are different and you've got to find a way to just be there for them you know to and, and it's impossible to address a situation and not have it take a little piece of you as well you know so that's that's the hard part and the hard part also is if you've tried to work with the crew and, and some of them don't make it through everything you try uh, for whatever reason. Those are difficult decisions that sometimes have to make. And we don't make them easy, that's for sure. Every crew member on a ship probably represents 25 people at home. So we always remember that, you know. So we do everything we can to make sure they succeed. Those are the hard parts, you know. The, I've had some emergencies, and I'm sure that you noticed too, that you always want to think you're going to re react a certain way. Yeah. Uh, and of course, everybody reacts differently in an emergency. So I've had four major incidents, air quotes, which we came out of very well. Yeah. And I have to say, I was happy that I responded appropriately. Not always the same, though, which is interesting, too. But I, I was able to function anyways. I wasn't curled up in a ball somewhere. So. Well, that's marvelous. That's good. <laughs> Were they so were they the same incidents? No, you? there's been fires, there's been missing people, there have been people of interest, for lack of a better term, maybe losing the ship. So there have been situations that were, uh, yeah, we had to deal with things. So. Yeah. It all turned out well. Good. Yeah. So as hotel director, you are one of the mm. highest ranking officers on board. So what perks come with being one of the highest ranking officers on board? Tell us how big your cabin is. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, The last ship was on one of the largest cabins in the fleet where you have a foyer and you have a living room and a kitchen and then a bedroom and a walk-in closet and yeah. a bathtub. So it's pretty nice. I mean, it's, a, it's good living conditions. Um, you have a car service every day in your cabin and all that. And, but I tend to do my own cleaning because I don't ever want to kind of lose who I am. People, oh, life's pretty good. It's sweet. Yeah, and I get free meals and jobs. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this isn't going to be a complaint in my end. <laughs> As hotel director, do you get any say in what ship you work on? Yes and no. Probably not so much. I mean, you get kind of categorized a little bit. You can ask to some degree. And sometimes you can make a deal like uh, if a certain person who maybe supports the ships that might want you. You basically serve a, a slot like everybody else would. Yeah, you go where they need yeah. you to go. Are you paid all year round or just when you are on board the ship? 
No, you, you, you get paid while you're time on the ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get paid decently well. But there are benefits that go all year round, like your medical and some other things, and some support stuff, your bonus program and that. So the, the answer would probably be yes and no, but probably mm -hmm. no. You, you, if, I, if I work eight months, I get paid for eight months, and then there's you know, other things that come into place. Okay. Like everybody. I think every crew member has the yeah. same situation. You said that in a, on a port day, you normally get a few hours to get off. But how right. often do you actually get off the ship and switch off? It really depends on the itinerary. Okay. But no, I usually go off for a couple hours if I can. Worst thing ever happened to me. I was up in the Baltic for like three summers and I'd never gotten off in, in St. Petersburg. Never. Yeah. So one time I decide I'm going to set up a tour and go see all the sites. I go off, I come back, and we had the largest noro virus breakout in the history of mankind. <laughs> oh, God. For like a whole week, there was like, it was just a disaster. You know? So, so it, it's really hard to go too far, you know. And if something happens, it, um, you're allowed to go. But the question would always be asked, where was the hotel director, you know. Yeah. Believe me, it was a lot of fun. And it just happened like that. And it wouldn't have not happened had I been there, it's, but there's always that uneasy feeling when you leave. So I usually go far enough, but not too far. I'm usually fairly close to the ship if I have to get back. And, yeah. and now with communication like we have now, you can go a little further now. So How long are your contracts? You say four months? Yeah, mine are four months on, two months off. The Marine Division, like captain, staff, they do... I think 12 and 12, you know, 12 weeks on, 12 weeks off. So it's a bit, a little bit of better. See, if I'd gone to school, I would have had a better job, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but mine are four on, two off, yeah. What are the top three skills that you think you need to be a good hotel director? I think people's skills would be number one. Yeah, first off, the crew is the, is the ship. And, and so you need to know them and you need to, you know, have a good rapport with them. Because they set the table. I can't do the jobs. I can only hopefully set the atmosphere for them to do their jobs yeah. in a comfortable way, right? Coping skills, number two, because you have to cope with a lot of things. And you know yourself. I mean, when you're away, you're alone with yourself. It's it's coping. And the other thing, of course, is a need and a want to learn. You must always be learning. You want to be learning, so that's basically, you know, that inclusive side to keep trying to do better than you did the year before so yeah it's great it's, it's, yeah. what is yeah. your favorite and least favorite part there. about being a hotel director but my favorite thing about being hotel director meeting people i think you know i mean like, you know we work with what 70 different nationalities i mean just that alone is fascinating and then of course the guests also are, are also fascinating so it's meeting people and so the worst part is i as i we have said when there's some bad things happen uh you know the challenge for us has been the last this last year. I mean, it's been incredible. But it, yeah. but it actually, we came through it very well. But there were stressful times when yeah. you've got crew members that are through no fault of their own stuck on board a ship away from family, and yeah. you're worried about what they might do, right? And that's the thing. So, what yeah. is your favorite and living least favorite board, part yeah. about living on a ship? Well, the favorite part I have about living on board the ship is just seeing different places and and opportunities to do things. And yeah. uh, my least favorite thing is having to do certain things at a certain time all the time. I mean. When I go on the ship, my time is no longer my time. Yeah. Uh, right, so to anyone aspiring to be a hotel director on board a cruise ship, mm. what advice would you give them? My, my recommendation is if you're really serious about learning the job is learn the other people's job. All of these different aspects of the operation that eventually you're going to be accountable for knowing. So that's the thing that you, you should do. And, and, and whatever free training that we have, and we have a lot, is take it. And the most important thing that you can learn as a hotel director is their job of, the, of, of every position on board the ship. I learned more from, from dishwashers and cooks and, than I learned from any manager I ever worked with. And, and I spent time working with uh, Guys, that, like when I first worked with Carnival, most of my my crew were Haitians that were in their 40s and 50s and 60s, and and here I was, some kid with the stripes on my shoulder. And what am I going to tell them and teach them? Yeah. Reverse that around and say, well, what can they teach me if they want to? Yeah. And they did want to. So that's the other thing. Learn, be humble enough to learn from everybody, anybody. Yeah. And certainly because most of them are, are far more than you will ever be in many ways. You know, uh, I, there's a guy that we work with on a ship. His whole paycheck goes to a, a orphanage back home. You never would know that. Never. But this is this is what we all are. We all do different things, right? Mm -hmm. But no, learn from, have, be willing to learn from everybody. Listen to people because you're going to be managing people that know more than you do. Yeah. So get to know what you don't know. Robert, you've answered all my questions. Great. Well, thank you very That's much for so doing it. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.